I don't think it's fair to have to justify everything. I think joy is a worthy endeavor. Good morning. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and we are here in Growing Zone 6B in New England. It is the 13th of July and I'm out to do some berry harvesting. Come on along. These are our ever-bearing strawberries um, as opposed to the June bearings that we have on the other side. And it looks like, oh yeah, there's some good stuff in here. Let's see what we've got here. Look at these. Just listen to all those birds. some of these peas. So I've got everything planted pretty tight in here. Um, I've got some corn and some tomatoes in between these rows of peas. The peas are going to be finished pretty soon here. I'd say a few more weeks. I put in these little cucumbers down here along this side. And they, they're doing well. They're doing well. They've also got some fruit coming in on them. So our experiment to see what grows best where is working out. The berries have been incredibly prolific this year. All this beautiful fruit is coming in. Look at that. Um, and it's coming in a handful at a time, which is, which is absolutely fine. Hey ladies. Say hi. Bill's going out to Brimfield today. He's gonna go see if he could get us some treasures. Antique shopping, <laughs> yay! <laughs> oh, you really like that kind of thing. I do, I do, I really love it. And Brimfield's great because it's just literally miles of vendors, so. I'm gonna hang out here and browse among the bushes. <laughs> You have a great time. I love you. I'll see you when you get back. Let me show you something. When we first got here, there, this area that is raspberries, these black raspberries, was all one big mound covered by a tarp with these black raspberries growing through. So we, we brought them all up, um, put a trellis in here, and then I started planting some other berries alongside and look what we've got look at the size of these these are a more traditional raspberry again they're ready when they come right off the core like that um, more of these big boys yeah okay. these ones are the the golden raspberries while we are back here, let me show you this outrageous fairy circle that is turning into a pentagram. I'm so into this thing. Bird's nest mushrooms. Aren't they cool? They, you can see why they're called bird's nest because they look like they have little eggs in them. I'm out here in the back now and our attempts at revitalizing these cultivated berries in the back is coming to fruition. Look at these beautiful fruits. And it is all over. Hello, jewelweed. Jewelweed has started blooming. Yay. I see a raspberry. A ripe one. You all, look at this. Pollination on these guys has been kind of, kind of iffy, so they're small, but here and there we did get full pollination and this is, so it's coming back. And this is another wild bush over here. It's also got some really tasty fruit on it. You all, I just found, I just found red currants, like wild red currants. They're a member of the gooseberry family. Come, let's grab them. Huh. Look at that. Look at that. 
Let's bring that in. A little bit more than a pocket harvest today, huh? Here's our beautiful harvest basket for today. It is completely disorganized. <laughs> I'm gonna do something about that. I talk a lot about pocket harvests because it, it, it all never comes in at the same time, right? Maybe dried beans do, I'll find out this year. Um, but this is what we've gotten so far in 2023. This is going back in the freezer. And what I'm gonna do with our little harvest of blackberries today is get them ready to go in the freezer with these folks. I have a similar bag in the freezer of green peas and we're also gonna shell these peas and get them ready to go in. Zucchini, I'm still trying to decide what I wanna do with zucchini. Got some raspberries, black raspberries, strawberries, and these beautiful red currants. Oh my gosh, these are so pretty, y'all. They're like little gems. I don't know what to do with these. I'm gonna have to research this a little bit. So I'm just spreading out the raspberries on here. Once these have thoroughly dried, um, put them in the bag with the other ones. Um, get, making sure that they're really dry is important so they don't stick together like one big clump. And I have to get in there with like a fork and you bust the bag and the whole, it's just... <sighs> Pro tip, dry your fruit before you freeze it. Now that I know that these ever-bearing strawberries are gonna bring us a lot more, I'm gonna start saving strawberries for jam. So before I put them up to freeze, I'm going to also get these really clean and dry them. But I'm also gonna take out um, the leafy bit and the core just with a sharp knife, just run a sharp knife around the inside of it and pull that out. And I may or may not cut these in half before they go in the freezer chicken snack. I've been meditating a little bit on my whys for gardening and I keep coming up with because I like it. <laughs> and I think, I think it's really easy to get stuck in a trap of hustle where everything's got to be for something. Um, this need to justify everything. I, I don't, I don't think it's fair to have to justify everything. I think joy is a worthy endeavor. I think reading books is a worthy endeavor. I think rest is a worthy endeavor. Um, and I find those things in my garden. I don't know about you, but it can be really frustrating sometimes um, when I consider the nature of things like frivolity and if I do something for myself, is it still frivolous? In relationship to the garden, there's something there about nest building, right? Because um, I live here. I live here and I live outdoors an awful lot here. Outdoors, our garden is a big part of our everyday living experience here. So for sure, there's nest lining going on there. I, I'm, I'm house proud, I'm garden proud. But also there's just the sheer enjoyment and restorative nature of working in the garden, of seeing things grow, of feeling in touch with the spirituality in the soil. Um, God is good, y'all. God is good. So here's everybody all laid out. I'm gonna give it about an hour and then I'll toss these into their respective bags and into the deep freezer. The peas, whoosh, the peas though have to be blanched. Very simply, I'm going to bring a pot of water to boil on the stove and then I'm going to shell my peas while that's going on. When it comes up to a boil, cook them for two minutes. And then it's gonna be the same thing as the strawberries and the blackberries. I'm just gonna lay them down on top of a towel and let them dry. If you look at them really closely, they kind of resemble very tiny frogs. Very tiny frogs. Let's get these shelled. I'm waiting for the stove to come up to temp so I can blanch those peas. Oop! 
I looked online for some things. I know that I have purchased in the past uh, dried currants. So I went looking for that and what I found out is that I can put these in the dehydrator at 115 degrees and sometime tomorrow um, I should have little tiny currant raisins. So I'm gonna set those up um, alongside my calendula. With the calendula, I'm gonna put them down with the stemmy bit up on the rack. I have been air drying these um, and I gave this a shot at a really low temp the other day just to see if, um, if I got a nicer product out of it. And I, I, I feel like I did. They're a little bit firmer, a little bit. They've got a little more starch in them and they don't take that long. So I'm just gonna slide these in. It doesn't matter what rack you put them on. I have my timer set for my peas. I'll take them out and shock them in cold water when it goes off. Um, these guys, they're super stemmy. So I'm gonna separate the berries from the everything and get that onto this drying rack. I'm just gonna spread these out so that everything's got some room to dehydrate. Double check for stems. Okay, there we go. We had all these zucchini come out of the garden in the last week. And um, so far we have turned some of it into cake, which was a really good thing. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mrs. Laser. And we've eaten a bunch of it with dinners. Um, but we're starting to have, there's a lot of zucchini coming in. So I think what I might do later today is put these on a large shred in the food processor, drain them a little bit, and then put them in bags of approximately one cup so that I can make zucchini bread when it's cold. Thankfully, things around here are starting to even out. Things are starting to settle out a little bit and I have time to be taking care of things here. I have plans coming up. I bought a bunch of inexpensive balsamic vinegar because I'm gonna try and pickle some cherries in the next week. Um, and we've got the fermenta our fermentation arc going on over here with the garlic scapes. Something you'll hear me say a lot is that no really good plan survives first contact. That's generally the way things go here. For example, remember the garlic scapes that I was gonna, you know, um, freeze? I have begun my fermentation arc and we're gonna be doing some other stuff. To be completely honest, I'm just really grateful that there's time to breathe right now because y'all. <laughs> Thanks so much for keeping me company. I will catch you up soon. Take care. Um, last year, we, last year, here was such a tough year last week. Um, 